In this video, we're going to solve problem 3 of power screw series. A power screw with a square thread is used to raise a load. The screw has a major diameter of 30 mm and a pitch of 4 mm with triple threads. The problem is telling us the major diameter, even if the problem called it diameter, we know the convention for a screw is that whenever the diameter is reported, that's the major diameter. We have the pitch, 4 mm is triple thread, that means that the lead is 3 times the pitch. The thread is square, so we can find the width, the height, and the minor diameter that we need for stress analysis, the mean diameter that we needed for stress analysis of the thread, as well as finding the torque to raise and lower the load. The coefficient of friction are given. We have the collar diameter and the force that we are going to raise or lower. The first part of the problem wants us to find the thread geometrical parameters, such as the depth, width, minor, major, pitch, and lead. We want to find the torque to raise the load and the torque that it takes to lower the load. Obviously, we are expecting to see a lower torque to, to lower the torque. We want to see if our screw is self-locking, which means that whether the screw is going to lower itself or we need to apply a torque to lower our load. We want to look at the efficiency. The coefficient of frictions are pretty low, so we are expecting to see a good efficiency. We want to find the body stresses, which are torsional and compression. We want to find the stresses on the thread. We have three stresses on the thread, the bearing stress, the bending stress at the roots and then the shear stress. So we're gonna find five stresses, two on the body and then three on the thread. And at the end, we're gonna put all the stresses into one meter to get one effective stress value. So the major diameter is 30 millimeter, the pitch is four millimeter, the coefficient of frictions are given for the collar and the thread the diameter of or the mean diameter of the collar is given, the force or the load that we need to raise or lower would be 65 kN. newton. We are gonna find the geometric parameters because it's a triple start, the lead is three times the pitch, it's 12 millimeter. The root diameter is the diameter, the major diameter minus the pitch. If you remember for the square or acme threads for both scenarios, if we have the major diameter and if we have the pitch, the height of the thread is half of the pitch. So therefore, because it's on both sides, the root diameter is simply the major diameter minus the pitch. And for mean diameter or pitch diameter is somewhere in between. And the difference would be one fourth of a pitch here to major diameter, but we have on both sides therefore it would be half of the pitch. The height and width are half of the pitch. The second part of the problem, we wanna find the torque that it takes to raise the load. So we have all the geometric parameters for our thread, the coefficient of friction, the lead, the mean diameter, the force that we are gonna raise, the diameter of the collar, so we can find the torque to raise the load. Also, we can find the torque to lower the load. As we can see, the torque to raise the load is much higher than the torque to lower the load. And that's what we expected, that it would take less load, less torque to lower the load. We call that TR, and if you wanna lower the load, then we have TL. And the TL value is close to zero, so we have to be careful not to change any parameters because if that value becomes zero or negative, that means that we don't need to apply any torque to lower the load. So our system is not going to be self-locking, and we have to design a mechanism to stop it from lowering itself. So that leads us to the next part of the problem that wants to check us, check the self-locking condition. Self-locking condition means that this value should not be uh, zero or negative. And then when we develop this equation, that's the equation that we have without the collar, which means that we are looking only at this portion of the equation. And if you look at this portion of the equation, 
you can see that the numerator needs to be positive. If you want the numerator to be positive, that means that the first term should be bigger than L. And if you rearrange that, we would get F bigger than L over pi dm. If you look at that, we see that we do not satisfy this condition. That means that our screw system is not self-locking. It will lower itself if we don't use the collar. If we look at the contribution of the collar, the contribution of this portion, we see we get a positive torque. That means that our screw system is self-locking. So in summary, using the uh, equation for self-locking, we see that it's not self-locking because it doesn't consider the collar contribution. But given the problem that we have a collar, we have to look at the torque itself and then we'll see the positive value. That means that we have to apply a torque to lower uh, our load. So our system is self-locking. Our system is not gonna lower itself simply because this value is, is positive. If you look at the efficiency of our system, we can see the efficiency is around 50%. Uh, it might be misleading to look at this number and then think that, oh, the efficiency is actually pretty low. But remember, for power screw, that is not a bad efficiency. Power screw are functioning based on the friction. You have the friction at the tread, between the tread and the knot. You have the friction at the collar level. So with a lot of friction values, the efficiency is going to be very low value. It's not like a gear system. So this 50% is not actually a bad number. Now we're going to look at the stresses. First, we're going to look at the stresses at the body. If this torque is going to create shear stresses, the equation for shear stress is TCJ. And then for us, TJ is pi over 32 dr to the fourth, we are looking at the root diameter here. And then if for C is the R over two, and if you simplify that, that's what we, we get. We can look at the other body stress, which is the compression. So the equation for compression would be tau, would be sigma F over A. That the force is going to create a normal stress. The torque is going to create a shear stress, and the force creates a normal stress. Again, we will be dealing with the root diameter. One way to distinguish body stresses from thread stress is that we are looking at dr here rather than dm. Now we are going to move into the stresses on the thread. The first one is the bearing stress. The bearing stress is the stress on the top of the thread. Bearing stress is also referred to as contact stress or compression stress. We are looking at this and then the cross section. If you'll remember the lecture, this thread goes around. So the cross section would be uh, a hollow circle with inner and outer diameter. Then we look at the bending stress. That would be a major value. That's So this force on the thread has a moment arm of one fourth of a pitch, it creates a stresses at the roots. These are the bending stresses. And then we want to find the shear stress at the top. We know that the shear stress is maximum in the middle of the cross section. So if this is our cross section in the middle, the shear stresses are maximum and then there are zero at the two end. So that's why at the top of the cross section, the shear stress is zero. When we are going to look into one Mises stress, only three out of these five stresses are, uh, are present. Because if I will draw a QP at the top of the thread, you have the two body stresses, and then you have the bending stress. The bearing stress does not come into play into the top element at the root. So I'm going to redraw it so that the figure is very crowded. At this point, you have the shear, you have the uh, bending, you have the normal, but you don't have the bearing stress which acts on, on this surface of the thread. And also, you don't have the shear simply because it's, it's zero at the top. So we're going to take three of our stresses into our one Mises. And this is the 
stress strain that we have. This is due to bending of the thread, compression of the body, and this is the shear of the body due to torsion. So we have three normal stresses, three shear stresses, in total six stresses. We use the general one misses equation. We're plugging all the values into one misses, and one misses is gonna give us one effective stress. And then we can compare that effective stress with yield to see if failure happens or not. Or we can look at these one misses and find a factor of safety based on the stress that we have. This magnitude is, is pretty high, so we need to be careful of what material we choose. Uh, for, for steel, it should be fine, but the factor of safety is not gonna be very high necessarily. And this is the general equation for one misses with all the stresses. So you might have seen one misses equation smaller than this if you're dealing with principal stresses, or if you have a 2D case, but with a 3D case, general stress state, that's the one misses equation we are dealing with. One common mistake that I see is that the students compare each individual stress with the yield. And that's not how we do failure analysis. If we have multiple stresses, they work collaboratively to form failure. So we have to use the failure criteria. Either we are using a one misses, that's what we did here. You can use MSS or Trusca criterion as well and in that cases we have to use principal stresses uh, first but what misses is a, a straightforward approach you really don't need to find principal stresses first you plug in everything into equation and gives you one value of a stress that you could compare with with the yield of the material